Hi everybody, this is Andy and I'm going to share with you some of the State of Michigan Cottage Food Law overview in this course. And if you're looking to start a business in Michigan and take advantage of the cottage food laws, this video is for you. And what's nice about this course is I'm standing in our store in Elk Rapids and my company has won 26 plus national food awards as America's largest and most competitive food competitions. So if you want to learn from someone who has a successful food business who started it from scratch as well as took advantage of the cottage food laws, then this course is for you. You produce your own product in your own home kitchen. For some of you taking this course due to local laws, producing a commercial recipe in your own home kitchen is allowed. However, for others, it may not be permitted. And even if you are not currently permitted to produce your recipe in your own home kitchen, you still need to understand this option because food laws are very fluid, which means they're changing very rapidly. So for your specific area, your specific state or region, if it doesn't allow you to create products and sell products in your own home kitchen today, it may be coming in the near future. So that's why you still need to understand this option. And this type of home-based operation is usually referred to as cottage food or artesian food. Usually, cottage food kitchens are unlicensed kitchens that have restrictions on the type of recipes produced, the production capability, maximum annual sales volumes, how the product is distributed, and more. And I'm going to share with you the state of Michigan where I live, some of our laws. So as you talk with your local health department, you'll have a good understanding of what they're going to be looking for and the questions that they may be asking and you may need to provide answers for when you contact them to inquire about producing food in your own home kitchen. The state of Michigan where I live has enacted a cottage food law for food entrepreneurs. And the following examples and references are specific to the state of Michigan cottage food requirements, but they do vary from state to state and from region to region. But I do want to include them as an overview and it gives you a good idea of the requirements because it gives you a starting point with the type of requirements or restrictions that are involved with operating a food kitchen. And the following references are specifically for the state of Michigan food law. And this information is not all inclusive and is not legal or health advice. So you would need to consult your local health department and department of ag and rural development for a comprehensive cottage food law for your area. So here is a non-comprehensive brief overview of the state of Michigan cottage food law. What are cottage foods? Cottage foods are referred to as specific types of foods that you can manufacture in your single home domestic residential kitchen. What does a single home or single family residence include? This is where you live. This includes your home or if you are renting. Thus, an apartment condominium are all considered a single family domestic residence. However, this definition does not include group homes or communal settings, including sororities or fraternities. What type of cottage foods can I produce in my home? non potentially hazardous foods that do not require time and or temperature control for safety. And here's a brief example of some of the types of cottage foods that are allowed to be produced in my home. Breads and cakes. For example, wedding cakes and birthday cakes, jams and jellies that can be stored at room temperature, cookies, dry herbs, dry baking mixes, dry soup mixes, popcorn, cotton candy, chocolate covered food, which includes pretzels, strawberries, pineapples, Rice Krispie treats, and roasted coffee beans. And here's a brief example of the type of cottage foods that are not allowed to be produced in a home kitchen in the state of Michigan. Fish and fish products, meat and meat products, canned products including salsa, apple butter, pickles, hummus, all beverages including apple cider, salad dressings, pet foods, barbecue sauces, or products made from fresh cut tomatoes or cut melons. 
are pet foods included under the cottage food law. The cottage food law applies to human food grade food only. How do I sell my cottage foods? And this is a great question that a lot of uh, people do have. And a lot of the people that I do consult with in our food consulting business, they want to know once I make the product in my home kitchen, how do I sell it? And the law allows you to sell your cottage foods directly to the consumer at direct to consumer venues. This include farmers markets, farm stands, roadside stands, and similar venues. The important thing is, is you are selling your finished product directly to the consumer cottage foods made in the state of Michigan in a home kitchen cannot be sold in the following venues to a retailer for resale. So if you make a recipe in your own home kitchen, you can't sell it at the local store. You cannot sell to a restaurant for use. You cannot sell to a restaurant for resale. You cannot sell to distributors or brokers for resale, nor can you sell over the internet or by mail order. So basically, if you make a food recipe in your own home kitchen, you have to sell it direct to the customer. That's the best way to remember that. If you make it in your own home kitchen, you have to sell it direct to the customer. Next, why does the cottage food law stop me from selling to a restaurant or grocery store? Since the cottage food kitchen is unlicensed and not inspected, the food handling practices are not inspected and evaluated by a food safety individual. This means the handling practices of the kitchen are not inspected and reviewed, so the final product is not considered an approved source for use in a restaurant or resale in a grocery store. Do I have to put a label on my cottage food? Yes. The law requires you to label your cottage foods. And here's the basic information that must be added to your label. Do I have to put a label on my cottage food? Yes. The law requires you to label your cottage foods. And here's the basic information that must be added to your label. Name and physical address, not a post office box, of the operation. Name of the product. The ingredients of the product in descending order of predominance by weight. In addition, if you're using a prepared item in your recipe, you must list the sub-ingredients on the label as well. For example, if you're using enriched flour, using the term enriched flour by itself is not acceptable. It should say enriched flour, which includes wheat flour, reduced iron, and all the other ingredients that go in to make the prepared item that you're adding to the recipe. Next, your label has to include the net weight or net volume. Next, the allergen lab labeling as specific as possible according to federal labeling requirements. In the final statement, you must also include the following statement. Made in a home kitchen that has not been inspected by the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. This must be on the label. And this statement must be at least the equivalent of an 11 point font, which is about 1 8 inch tall. In addition, the color of this font must provide a clear contrast uh, to the background. So this must be a clear statement. The font must be clear enough so it's a clear contrast to the background of the label. So let's take a look at a completed label example for a home kitchen label that is made in the state of Michigan. One question that I get from my consulting clients is, what does allergen labeling as specified in federal labeling requirements, what does that actually mean? This means you must specifically identify any of your ingredients that are made from specific food groups. These food groups include milk, eggs, wheat, peanuts, soybeans, fish, including shellfish, crab, lobster, or shrimp, and tree nuts, such as almonds, pecans, or walnuts. In addition, if you have an ingredient made with a wheat-based product, you have two options. First, list the allergen in the ingredient list. For example, white bread. This includes whole wheat flour, milk, sugar, water, salt, and least. In this example, the statement whole 
wheat flour meets the requirement of federal law. Next, include an allergen statement such as contains after the ingredient list. For example, for white bread with the following ingredients, whole wheat flour, water, sodium, salt, and yeast contains wheat and milk. The contain statement must reflect all the allergens found in the product. And the last thing that you want to have happen is someone that actually gets sick from eating your recipe. Because as a food entrepreneur, it's our responsibility to, number one, adhere to federal food guidelines and food requirements. That's just good business. But number two, you definitely want to make sure that anyone consuming your product knows exactly what is in it. Because more and more allergens are being experienced by people of all ages. And you certainly don't want anyone getting sick. In addition, you certainly don't need a product recall. Because if you have an ingredient in your recipe that is not disclosed on your label, you may be required to do a product recall if you are distributed in stores or distributors across the nation. For example, a Michigan-based company had to do a product recall of over a million jars of their individual products because they were putting ingredients in their recipe that was not listed on the label. I don't know why they did that. I don't know why they made a decision to do that, but they did do, and they had to do a national recall, which number one, it's not good for the brand, but more importantly is you don't want to get anybody sick because as a food entrepreneur, people are going to be consuming your product and they want to know that they can trust 100% in what's on your label. Are there any special requirements for tree nut labelings for allergens? Yes. Your cottage food... If it has tree nuts in the ingredients, you must identify which tree nut you are using. For example, if you made the following product, nut bread, an acceptable ingredient list would be wheat flour, water, almonds, salt, and yeast. But the following would not be acceptable. Flour, water, nuts, salt, and yeast. As you can see, you had to specifically identify the type of nut that was used in the recipe. For example, we're using almonds. So now that you've made your recipes in your own home kitchen, you've created all your label requirements, and you're adhering to the label guidelines, the next question is, how much can I sell? So are there any other limits I need to know about cottage foods? Yes. According to the state of Michigan, if you're a state of Michigan food entrepreneur making it out of your own home kitchen, you can sell up to $15,000 gross annual sales per household. So this means you can sell about $1,200 per month in gross annual sales before you have to get your products made in a fully licensed kitchen. The nice thing about this $15,000 is it allows you to create an income from your business, number one, get a return on your investment, number two, but more importantly, number three, as your business grows, you're going to be producing higher volume of recipes that are going out the door, and number two, you're going to want greater distribution opportunities, selling to restaurants, selling to stores, selling to distributors. So $15,000 annual gross sale. That's according to the state of Michigan. Again, states do vary with their uh, different laws, so you'll definitely need to contact your local health department to determine how much in gross annual sales you can produce out of your kitchen. Can I make the cottage food products in an outbuilding on my property, like a shed or a barn? No. The law requires the cottage food products to be made in your kitchen and stored in your single-family residence. Approved storage areas include the basement and attached garage of the home where the food is made. Will I need to meet local zoning or other laws? Yes. The cottage food exemption only exempts you from the requirements of licensing and routine inspection by the Michigan Department of Ag. What oversight does the Michigan Department of Agriculture have over my cottage food operation? Cottage food operations are considered to be food establishments but will not have to meet most requirements outlined in the food law. In all cases, food offered to the public must be safe and unadulterated, regardless of where it is produced. 
And as a cottage food operator, it's your responsibility to assure the food you make is safe. In the event a complaint is filed or a foodborne illness is linked to your food, the Department of Agriculture will inspect your operations as part of their responsibility under the food law. And as part of that investigation, it may be necessary for the Department of Agriculture to enter and inspect your cottage food production and storage areas, view your copies of your records that you keep, and take photos during the course of a complaint investigation. And the Department of Agriculture also has the right to seize products suspected of being adulterated. They can order any corrections of label violations or require you to discontinue making unapproved products. So in a nutshell, contact your local health department, get a list of the type of foods that can be made and the requirements that are needed to be followed as a cottage food operator. Are there any additional requirements regarding my home's on-site well or sewage system? No, but you should have your well tested. If you're on well water, you should have your well tested annually. So you'll need to contact your local health department for sampling containers and directions on the sampling of your well. Does my equipment, which includes your stove or refrigerator, need to be NSF? An NSF is a food equipment evaluation group. Does it have to be NSF approved? As a cottage food operator, you would not be required to meet NSF standards for your equipment used to manufacture the cottage food product. Can I bake bread in a wood-fired oven? Yes, as long as the oven is in your home kitchen. When are cottage food products subject to sales tax? The best thing to do is contact your Department of Treasury. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because there's a number of other videos on how to start a food business that you'll definitely enjoy. But most importantly, um, take a look at all the videos that we have, how to start a business, business planning, business expenses, how to create the most profitable price point for your food products, and all this is available free right on our YouTube channel. Again, this is Andy. Make sure you subscribe and watch all the other videos that we have on how to start a very successful food business.